Hey guys, it's Ryder here with my Arrow Season 4 Episode 12 review. Yeah, it was an awesome one. We got the return of Roy Harper. Uh, you know, I think this season has definitely missed Roy. I think Roy was a massive help and a massive, you know, great, just a great character overall through the second half of Season 1, Season 2, and of course Season 3. Um, if you've seen Season 3, then you know how his story kind of goes out. Um, but it's a very interesting way for him to return. He's basically brainwashed, and we're going to get right into it right now, like exactly right now. So uh, we'll, just, we'll do a top five moments from this brand new episode. It's going to be a ton of fun. Starting right now with number five, of course. Arsenal, Roy, whatever. He, he's back. And, uh, you know, he kind of comes back in an interesting way. He ha he's stealing all these technology things from all these big companies. Now, they did some really cool things. Uh, with there, well, one really cool thing that really caught my eye, uh, an Easter egg really, was they had Roy Harper stealing from Cadmus Technology. For those of you who don't know what Cadmus is, Cadmus is this big program that's kind of run by Lex Luthor in the comics. And, uh, you know, they, they are kind of responsible for, you know, the creation of Arsenal in a way, like the transition from Red Arrow into the Arsenal character. So it was really fun for them to just kind of name drop that, that uh, organization. Of course, Lex Luthor is not really running, you know, that version of Cadmus, but still it's just, it's really fun that they were able to name drop it. Um, but he's stealing from a bunch of different technology companies um, for a villain known as the Calculator. We'll talk more about him later. Um, and uh, he is, he, he's kind of, he has this tech in his eyes and, you know, he's just being, he's kind of being brainwashed, but he's more being blackmailed and manipulated. Uh, the Calculator knows all about Roy and Oliver and he's going to reveal, you know, to the, you know, Star City and the world or whatever that... Oliver was really always the green, it was the arrow, and Roy was never the arrow and everything. Um, so, you know, you see how it is, but uh, it, was, it was really fun to see him back. He ends up putting on the Arsenal suit, and he's like, man, did I miss it? It was kind of almost weird for me to adjust to this, because I've really adjusted to Thea in the red, and Thea fighting alongside Team Arrow now. Um, you know, so it was cool. Of course, Roy couldn't stay. Of course, he can't stay. He has to go back. Um, I, I hope that he's going somewhere. I'm hoping that we're going to be getting an episode, like, every season with him. Like, as he'll be, like, a character that's maybe similar to Con John Constantine, who we, we see just every now and then, you know, kind of appear. Um, I'm, I'm really hoping we get more from Roy. I, you know, it seems like we could almost see more from him this season. Like, if, you know, depending on who dies at the end of the season, we could possibly maybe see him return for the funeral. Who knows? Uh, but the acting sequences were a lot of fun. His comedy uh, shots were kind of, you know, pretty fun. His moments with Thea were, as, you know, as intense as they were, I'd say, in season two and three. Uh, it's just, it's sad that we couldn't see more from the character. You know, I real like I said, I feel like the show has definitely missed him. I think the you know, there's there's still something that is missing, I think, from the show uh, with him gone. Although that they've done a pretty good job of kind of patching that hole up, I definitely feel like there's still an empty spot. But, um, you know, still, I, it was really nice to see him return and wear the Arsenal suit again. So, yeah, moving on to number four, Felicity Struggles. So, Felicity, of course, she is... She's the leader and the head of Palmer Tech, CEO, and, uh, you know, she's still in the wheelchair. She seems like she's adjusted, but, you know, she's still unsure of herself. She's still all of this, and uh, it, it just becomes to the point where, you know, she's having, she's, like I said, she's having trouble with all of this. And, uh, you know, she's, she's just unsure. So, of course, Curtis kind of comes in, helps reassure her. This was a pretty big Felicity episode as well because she had a villain. You know, of course, the calculator who kind of hides behind the screen. And, uh, you know, they, they masked the voices and everything. And it was just, it, it's interesting the way that they've done it, the way that they did it. And uh, to have, you know, at the end of the episode, Felicity kind of getting her confidence back. It's, it's, you know, it's like... Like I said, it's part of that journey with Felicity. She's going to 
she she has to she's struggling right now. She's like she seems like she's adjusted to the wheelchair, but she has to kind of adjust her mindset, I'd say, to the way she handles everything now. And I think that's gonna we'll see that struggle maybe happen through a few other episodes, um, you know, because it's not something that can just come so easy to anybody, just adjusting to that. But I think that, you know, Curtis is the right character to do it. Uh, speaking of, you know, Curtis, moving on to number three, we get our first kind of tease of Mr. Terrific. So, no, I've, I know I've said that in the past, but this week we really did. Roy had to steal from Palmer Tech at the beginning of the episode. He's like, dude, I don't want to hurt you. Just give me what I need. Um, and, you know, Mr. Terrific or Curtis Holt's like, hell no, dude, no. So we actually see Curtis kind of fight for the first time. Uh, you know, the way that he hid behind, uh, under the table when Fliss, you know, when, uh, Double Trouble came and into the old arrow base and, you know, Felicity had to pick up the shotgun or the Tommy gun or whatever and just shoot. Curtis was hiding underneath the table. Now Curtis is actually fighting. I think, you know, this he wasn't a really great combat from him, but he definitely has what it takes to eventually be good. Um, and, you know, he fights with Roy for a little bit. He actually picks up a T-bomb, though, and he chucks it at Roy. Of course, you know, he pressed it too late, and Roy kind of threw it back at him. So, you know, the T-bomb kind of exploded on him, but... The the point here is is that they're really trying to get to the point where this is this guy will become Mr. Terrific. He will have these T bombs and he will, you know, fight. And I thought that was a lot of fun. Moving on to number two. Thea is dying. So this was a really big story. Uh, we also got some other characters return that I didn't really talk about too much. We saw Nissa. Nissa has Nissa Al Ghul, she's escaped from prison. And uh, she has gone and found what is called the lotus or whatever. Uh, most likely like a flower or whatever. And it can, it seems like it can uh, cure, you know, this, this uh, hunger and, you know, need to kill from the Lazarus pit. And uh, that, that, I think that's what it's supposed to do. So Nissa's escaped and she actually has a battle with Kantana. Yes, we see Tatsu Yamashiro return as Kantana wearing the suit. It was so badass to see Nissa fight Kantana for the Lotus. You know, although I'd say season three wasn't that, you know, it wasn't the best out of the four seasons, you know, there were elements of it with all the sword fighting, um, you know, just the way it was executed, the characters they had done, uh, the kind of, the whole kind of, you know, gritty kind of, you know, I don't know, warrior element of it, mystical warrior element of it, I, I really appreciated. So they, they showed that again through this episode. Season 4 is a lot more city-based because uh, Damien Dark's a more city-based villain. Um, of course, Ra's al Ghul isn't. But overall, just very cool to see them again on screen. So basically, this Lotus, which we, we, we kind of find out about, uh, it can reverse the, like I said, it can reverse the effects of the Lazarus Pit. Um, so, of course, Thea is highly affected by this. Her, you know, but her bloodlust or her what, but bloodlust or whatever, I don't know what it's called. It's something like that. Um, where, you know, she has, she needs to kill to, like, survive and kind of feed the urge. Um, and the kind of, it's like the side effects of the Lazarus Pit. Well, you know, of course, she doesn't want to do that. She's been working on it, but it's just not working. Like, you know, she's coughing, she's weak. Uh, to make a long story short, she's put in a, into a coma. Or she's not put into a coma, she goes into a coma. And she's in the hospital at the end of the episode, and basically she's given a couple days to live. Well, here's the bottom line. It seems very obvious that they want us to think now, you know, first they wanted us to think that Felicity was going to die. Okay, well, that's not the case. Now they want us to think that Thea's going to die. Well, I don't think that's going to be the case. I, slowly, they're, re they're secretly revealing who is going to be in that grave, and I think it's going to be John Diggle. It just seems so... It seems like it's going to happen. Really, it does. And I've already expressed my thoughts on this, I think, last week and the week before. Um, but, you know, it just... 
don't don't read too much into this whole Thea thing. Everyone's very you know big on this, but um, next week's episode is going to be a lot of fun because at the end of this episode, when Oliver's sitting by you know Thea's bedside, you know or possibly her deathbed, which it obviously isn't, but what Oliver thinks could be her deathbed, Nissa shows up. She's like, "I will give you this lotus that I have." And uh, I only want, all I want for you to do is kill Malcolm Merlin. And uh, that Nyssa finally comes back. Now, like I was saying, Nyssa comes back, but she is going to have an interesting arc now. Because she, I mean, it's going to be interesting her versus Merlin. Because I think that's a battle that everyone kind of does want to see. I'm excited next for next week because I think that we could be going back to Nanda Parbat in, in some senses. Uh, if not, you know, it's going to be a big Malcolm Merlin episode. We got a big Malcolm Merlin episode last season, too. Uh, we haven't gotten too much big stuff from him. He's kind of just been a uh, kind of shadowy, fun side character. But uh, nothing too huge this season from him. That's why I'm looking forward to next week's. Also, there's another reason I'm looking forward to next week, and that's why we, then we get into number one right here. And that is that the calculator is revealed to be Felicity's father. So the big thing is this is a two-part episode, which it makes sense. Um, and most likely the whole Thea death thing will most likely be resolved next week as well. Uh, also, you know, we, I, I wonder if Malcolm Merlin will die next week. I, I think he's such an unpredictable character for a couple reasons. Uh, Malcolm Merlin is so unpredictable, number one, because... We don't know exactly what his plans have been, what he's been doing as Ra's al Ghul. The other thing is, you know, it's just the nature of the character. They have taken him in almost every direction. And uh, to, to kind of have this kind of go through, you know, it's, it, it's going to be interesting how, if Team Era will choose to kill him. You know, also the other big thing is, I'm not sure if Kantana is coming back next week. I really want to see her fight alongside the new Team Arrow. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and also, I'd be interested to see if Kantana maybe went and was, you know, uh, just, you know, was maybe like a bodyguard of, of sorts for Nyssa. Uh, very similar to the way she's going to be a bodyguard for Rick Flagg in the Suicide Squad movie. Because they're doing another version of Kantana. So it'll be interesting to see that. Uh, but let's kind of move more into the calculator. So yeah, the calculator, he was the main villain of the episode. He's, so he, he's a big Birds of Prey villain. Like a, uh, like a big Barbara Gordon Oracle villain. Because, you know, of course, in the comics, Barbara Gordon, she's like that central hub character for pretty much every DC Comics hero. The calculator is pretty much that big DC Comics uh, hub character for supervillains. And he serves the same purpose Barbara Gordon Oracle does. And that is to, you know, hack into things, get villains into certain places, you know, set up bombs, technology malfunctions, all that stuff. And we kind of see that. Now, the, the fun part is, throughout this whole episode, I was kind of, exp I don't know if I explained earlier in the, the video, but... Um, you know, I, I was saying, I think I said that the, the whole thing was that Felicity and the calculator didn't know that they were actually talking to one another. Although Felicity knew she was talking to the calculator, she didn't know she was talking to her dad. You know, we don't exactly know if the calculator knew that Felicity was on the other end of that, that you know, line or chat or anything. Um, we'll see what happens. I'm also kind of wondering if the calculator will, you know, help... Felicity walk again, and maybe that's his main purpose. Maybe he wants to help build like some kind of walking machine or device or you know something along the lines that could maybe give her some strength back. I, I don't know. You know, I think that there could be some very interesting stuff that goes on uh, between them. It seems like he's got plans. He he wants to do something. He wants the big that that you know so that thin power chip card that uh, they were working on, uh, team that, that uh, Palmer Tech was made and was working on. Overall, this was a really good episode, like one of the better ones of the season. Now, this season's been pretty solid, but I, I really, I very much enjoyed this episode. Um, you know, Oliver, I gotta be honest, I thought this season Oliver would be a bit more uh, central, but I think this season... They have really branched out, and they are focusing on a ton of other characters. Having Oliver still be the main character, but kind of just, 
you know, helping with all these other bigger situations with other, you know, more side characters around him. Next week's episode is going to be a lot of fun. I'm very much looking forward to it, so make sure you are here for my review. Also, a really fun Flash episode coming next week as well. They're going to Earth 2. It's going to be a ton of fun. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to click your like and subscribe, and let me know in the comment section your thoughts on this episode. Also, go check out our new Agent Carter video, and of course, our Legend of Tomorrow Episode 3 review, which should be going up very shortly. I'm Ryder, signing off from Toys with Attitude, and keep riding, guys. Bye.